one of the things that we've got to constantly remember this. God brings us through seasons. He prepares us. And one of the things he doesn't want you to do is bring the garbage from one season into a new season. He can't, you can't, see, when he puts you into a new season, you can't bring your old stuff in. Your old ways of attitude, your old ways of thinking, your old, he, everything's got to become new. That's why it becomes a new season. In Matthew 13, would everybody go there for a moment? <clears throat> Matthew 13. In verse 24. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it together. In a parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them out? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. Until the what? the harvest. Everyone say harvest. And the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them into bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. This is so powerful because it is profound where we are right now. 2018 is a representation of witness of the one in a new beginning. It is the witness of the one and the new beginning. The tares are a representation of a noxious or poisonous. It means poisonous. It's very harmful. It's corrupt. It carries a corrupt plan. causes dissension. While men are, were distracted, the enemy comes and plants these individuals a wickedness alongside the righteous for a period of time until the final harvest. Now is the beginning of the final harvest. In verse 37. Then he answered them and he, he said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. The enemy who sold them is the devil. Therefore, as the tares are gathered together, burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. And will cast them into the fire and the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Thus says the Lord for 2018. This is my year for my people. This is the year of the terror. Now this terror is spelled T-E-A-R. It's associated with a ripping apart. It is also associated with tear. That's where it comes, tear drops. It will be the year of the terror and separation. As the commercial jet sets to its final approach and the turbulence around it increases the closer it gets, so will I create such turbulence in all dimensional realms that it will cause a tremendous tear globally and spiritually. As the garments were at once torn on my priests because of blasphemous acts and repentant attitudes, so I will tear back the hidden evils that have provoked, provoked my anger. 
For I have heard the cries of the innocent, as I have heard the cries of my people in the bondage of Egypt, and I made a way of escape for them. So I will do it again, says the Lord, for the righteous and the innocent. Those who refuse to set their hearts towards me will be snared by the traps of great delusion. For only true visual sight will be given to my righteous. Confusion will be common to those that do not know me. And common sense will become a stumbling block to the wicked. I do a new thing, says the Lord, that common sense cannot comprehend. Only by my spirit will it be understood. I will release the earlier and the latter rain that will rain on all mankind and give everyone an opportunity as we enter the season of plenty. For some, they will rain coals of fire and I will turn their wealth into ashes. And for others, I will increase their barns that have been set aside for my purpose to do my will. I will bless my people and cause jealousy to enter the hearts of the rebellious and cause curiosity to search me out. I will invade the treasures of darkness that belong to my people and I will expose the secrets that have been hidden from you and I will manifest my plan that I've hidden in your hearts. I will cause unity and healing to escalate in my body and my presence will become well known to my righteous. I will reject the haters and pretenders and will advance the lovers and worshipers of my presence. Those guided by my spirit and word, and word will maintain peace, joy, righteousness, and prosperity. Those that are constant, consistent, and enduring will find my favor and protection. I will invade the education system and turn over the deaths that promote and provoke deception. I have set my army in array to drive out the forces of evil and establish my banner. Revelation will increase and revolution will be its fruits. America will be great again because I've caused it. And Israel will once again stand tall. Wars and rumors of wars will increase, allowing exposure of your true enemies and be put down. And my kingdom and government will begin its approach as my body prepares the way. The storm that approaches will bring chaos and confusion, but not for my people. Out of the storm will bring harvest and blessings. I will expose the false resources and become the true source, invading every level of humanity's idolatry and change the course into a new season and a new world. Prepare a way of escape only for my beloved. Hear, my children, from the Father of true love and stay hidden in me. One of the things that the Lord put on my heart is, is during this time of the storm, because we've been in like what we call uh, the eye of the storm. We haven't seen the revival. We've seen revival years ago. But right now, it's just like a, a calm. It's a, it's a blessing. It's been calm right now. But we haven't seen the great pouring out. And it is coming. That's what 2018 is about. Would you go to... <clears throat> Matthew 24. We are getting ready to enter a whole new world like we've never seen before. It's going to be changed. Matthew 24. Is everybody okay? We well, didn't run out, so praise God. God, I need some. Could you plug that in? Whew. Is anybody hot in here? You're supposed to be on fire. What's the problem? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we need to turn on some fans? Is everybody cool? I mean, is everybody? All right, turn the fans on. Turn the AC up. Let's freeze <laughs> so we can burn it again. Hallelujah. Somebody plug in a couple of fans here. Glory. Matthew 24 and verse 32. <clears throat> Sounds like I'm in a helicopter. <laughs> I've been in them. <laughs> Glory. Is everybody there? 2432. Hike. 
Now this is important. It says, now learn the parable from the what? Fig tree. The fig tree represents Israel. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Surely I say to you, this generation, this what? Generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Now, this is phenomenal because a generation is 70 years. When it speaks about Israel, it's because when Israel became a nation in 1948, well, 70 in 1948 is 2018. Hello? Verse 35. He says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now you've got to understand that the days of Noah, there were Nephilim, Rephilim, there was fornication, lesbian, homosexual, there was perversion. There were giants on the earth then, in the days of Noah. It was a sick time, is what we're seeing right now. <clears throat> For as the days before the flood, everyone say flood. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in their field and one will be taken and another one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be what? Broken into. Therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not know. So then a, so uh, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food to, in due season? Blesses that servant when his master, when he comes and finds him doing so. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of. And we will cut him in pieces and appoint, him, appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, the seven years is associated with a generation from 1948, adding 70 years is 2018. The Lord intends to visit this generation and change the world with the approaching storm of chaos and glory. Noah received the rain that was unprecedented in his generation with Nephilim, Rephilim, giants, hybrids, perversions, idolatries, homosexual, lesbian, transgenders, false gods and goddesses, satanic ritual abuse, pride and arrogance, murder and hatred, antichrist religions. Hmm. The, pres the presence of water covered the earth and God begins to release the earlier and latter rain of the blessings and judgment. See, this is a reflection of where we are now because even the floods that came to destroy the wicked allowed Noah and his family to enter the ark. Those floods are associated with called the earlier and latter rain, which we are entering now. Noah gathered every species of animals into the ark, as God will gather every nation and tongue into his rapture of escape. To those that are righteous followers, <clears throat> he will reign this uh, uh, unpresented, uh, overwhelming reign will be of the Holy Spirit. It will eventually fall on this whole generation and the one to come. This is the eye of the storm that we are in, but we will enter the other half in 2018. The eye of the storm is to get our houses in divine order and preparation with necessary shifts in our lives, 
businesses, ministries, health, and finances to receive a fresh encounter of God's presence. This coming flood will change radically the landscape of religion and earthly kingdoms. In Acts chapter 2, Verse 14. Acts chapter 2 and verse 14. What three things come out of chaos? And harvest, blessing, and what? Change. In verse 14, it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all of dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Are we in the last days? You betcha says God that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. On my men servants and on my maid servants. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they, will, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming in the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. We are <clears throat> in this time right now. It is the same pouring out then that is getting ready to do it again. It's getting ready to do it again. Because that was the earlier and now there will be the latter rain. But there's something we must do. Prepare and position. In James chapter 4. Things in divine order. Everyone say divine order. That means divine order means priority. Where is your priority? James chapter 4. And verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures or your flesh. Then he, or on your sins. In verse 4, he explains that it's adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. <clears throat> or you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the what? Proud. And he gives grace to the what? The humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Listen, we are, we are promoted by humility, not by performance. Does everybody get it? How are you pro promoted? By humility, not by performance. Why? Because God searches the heart, not the talent, not the ability. He searches the heart. You are promoted in the kingdom by humility, not by performance. Because performance will always follow humility. So that means because we are promoted by humility, not by performance, that means that there's, there's got to be a making of a shift from self-centeredness to Christ-centeredness in everything we do. That's why there's things got to be put into divine order. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Hebrews 3. Hebrews chapter 
Welcome to Sunday morning training session. Remember, this is a military operation, not some kind of religious garbage. Amen? Amen. Hebrews. How many Hebrews we got here? Did you drink coffee this morning? Amen. Well, then you're a Hebrew. <laughs> and a Shebrew. <laughs> Hallelujah. And verse 7, Hebrews 3, 7. <clears throat> if you didn't get, I'm sure you didn't get all the word for 2018. We'll put it up. Viv will put it together. She interprets my writing quite well. <clears throat> Even when I can't. In verse 7, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But rather, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if, if means you got to cooperate. We hold the beginning of our confession steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In every area of our life, we must come into compliance with the voice of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. In every area of our life, we must come into compliance with the voice of the Holy Spirit before we can fulfill and complete our mission. Because then people easily get astray. They get easily distracted. That's why he says there's three things he requires in abiding. Abiding in his presence through worship. Abiding in his truth through word. And abiding in fellowship. For he says forsake not to assemble. Amen? In Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Now faith is the what? Substance. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made by the things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, to which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that the end did not see in death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to him must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which was according to to faith. Faith is your connection to God with the word of truth. I always look at faith as the umbilical cord to God. You were born in a physical realm with an umbilical cord to your mother. When you were born again, that was severed. Now your umbilical cord runs from the throne room of God with the one that bored, born you again not out of the flesh or man's desire, but out of the Spirit of God. Faith is your connection 
with the Word of God to your Creator. That's why faith is what pleases God. That means you believe everything He says. Everything. Amen? So faith is your connection to God with the Word of truth and the voice of the Holy Spirit. So we accept no limitations or imitations or intimidations. We are not moved. How many of y'all want to be a warrior? Amen. It's time to kick butt. You have to fight for the presence of God. You must fight. Those not willing to fight become casualties. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians 10 and verse 3. So many people get this confused, but I'm going to share this. It's... Uh, it says, for though we walk in the physical world, we do not war according to the physical. Does everybody get it? Even though it says, so though, even though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. A stronghold is a memory lie. Anything that you've agreed to, even when you were a child, anyone that spoke over you and you agreed with it, it became a stronghold. That's why people stronger a struggle later on in life because the enemy is out to get you the moment you came out of the womb of your mother. It was out to enter you, use you, and kill you. That's why many children who come up, look at homosexual and lesbian and transgender, <laughs> it's not a genetic change. It's a demon. And because of it, it can change your genetics. It can change your structure because of its presence. So we're to be, these, our weapons are casting these down, these, these thoughts down. Look in verse 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity and to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. In other words, listen, when you get start getting sick, don't sit there and go, oh my gosh, how do my, what medicine do I need to take? You need to fight it spiritually first. You need to fight that. Oh man, I think I'm getting a flu. Oh no, I'm not. By his stripes, I'm healed. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Listen, nothing can come against the word of the Lord if you believe it. If you believe it. So you don't have to manipulate you don't have to do any of that. You trust God to provide, but you tell the truth. You speak the truth. Amen? So our weapons are the word of God. Amen? It's the what? Word of God. That's why it's sharper than two-edged sword, isn't it? Piercing even the spirit, soul, and body of a human and a discerner of the thoughts. Oh, glory. So we must maintain a parallel thought pattern with the Word of God and His promises. We must maintain a parallel thought pattern with the Word of God and His promises. In Philippians 3. Oh, yes. We are entering a new world. Philippians 3.13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. 
In other words, we must press on letting go of all the emotional attachments of people, places, and things. Not like Lot's wife, who turned and became stone. Why her? That was a symbolic as for in individuals that are still focusing on their past and trying to fix their past. See, you can't fix your past. Only God can. What is done is done. When God brings something up to do, that's when you do it. But don't be looking to go try to fix everything from your past. It ain't going to work. We'll end up messing it all up. We're to be pressing on. Paul said he counted a dung of the, the knowledge of learning of Christ compared to his past. He said, man, I'm pressing on. It doesn't matter what happened in my life. I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ. All things pass away. All things become new. That's where you parallel your thought pattern with the word of God and the voice of God. Amen? Amen. Philippians 4. In verse 4. Is everybody there? I hope so. It doesn't say miserable, downcast, or oppressed. It says rejoice. Re rejoice who? In the Lord when? When you feel like it? When you get blessed with a million dollar check? Always. When you get blindsided by somebody who ran a red light? Hallelujah. I'm alive. Rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. And let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. See, when you're in that attitude of gratitude, you rejoice if you're thankful. If you're not in an attitude of gratitude, you're miserable. You're always want, 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 want. Sound like a sick duck. <laughs> Why? Because now you're looking for pleasures of the world. To fulfill instead of God's presence. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And be anxious for nothing. Hello. That, that means fear is pushing you. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplications. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. People grumble and complain without going to prayer. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be given to you. Don't call everyone. Hey, man, what do you think? I need this. I need that. Oh, shut up. Go to the throne instead of the phone. You'll have success. Amen. It says when you do that, it says in verse 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, because you ain't going to understand it all, will guide your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, lovely. Maintain good, positive attitude, knowing all things are going to work to the good by paralleling your thoughts with the Word of God and the voice of the Spirit. James chapter 5. God is preparing us. Trying to get us to a place where we're not leaning on the world. And we're not men pleasers, but God pleasers. James chapter 5 and verse 7. Therefore be what? Oh, snap. Be what? Patient. That means you got to endure. Patient. Don't become a patient. Hello? Of fear. Be patient. In other words, endure. Therefore, be patient, brother, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer wa waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the earlier and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is where? At hand. Do not grumble. Against one another, brother, unless you become condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take 
the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Hallelujah. So you may go through a Job season. That means you're getting a new job. Amen. You're getting promoted. That's, you never knew that you could get a job through the Bible. Man, the first time I ever read the Bible, I saw, man, look, at there's an employment section in here. <laughs> Early and later rain is pouring out in the time of chaos, storms, and trials, and tribulations. We need to endure and make all shifts completely relying on the Lord. Whatever shift you need to make, make a holy shift. In the area of your health, your finances, your businesses, whatever it is, or you will miss what God's trying to do. And I want to get saturated in his presence in this outpouring. And no matter what's going on around you, you won't be moved if you're connected. Isaiah 43, and we'll close here, almost. Isaiah 43, verse 16. <clears throat> Isaiah 43, verse 16. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power of they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I do a what? A new thing. Now it shall come. Now it shall spring forth. So you shall know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to drink to my people, my chosen. Drink means pouring out. We all need a drink. We all need to be drunk in the spirit. This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. Praise God. You know, as Noah stepped out of the ark after the floods and to a new dispensation of God's kingdom, we will also have this opportunity and make this shift from spiritual complacency to ruling and reigning in the life of Christ. This outpouring will continue till you and I are taken home. Does everybody get it? The flood will continue until we are carried away. And I want to close at 1 Corinthians 15. The harvest, just in case you want to know what the teaching was. First Corinthians 15. And verse 50. <clears throat> now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, means die, die, or, but we shall all be what? Changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, there's no coincidence that we have a president named Trump. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. For when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. 
But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Wow. Keep fighting. Keep sowing. Keep pressing in. Keep obedient. And stay dead. Amen? Because there's always another level of death we must reach. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Allow the revelation of your word in this seed be imparted to each and every one. Protect it with the blood of Jesus. Let it not be stolen, disregarded, or forgotten. But let it grow and bear fruit for your glory and preparation and reminder of what is to come and what we are entering so we will not be moved in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.